All right, welcome to the Fixed Blade Friday knife preview for knifeoutpost.com. That's right, the new site that you have to go to for the Friday releases at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The quickest way to get there is knifeoutpost.com slash Friday. Now, I'm just gonna give you a quick and dirty, a couple of highlights for some of the knives, so we're not gonna put up the full specs. Uh, for those, you'll wanna go to knifeoutpost.com slash preview and get those with all the specs, pricing, and some nice photos to look at as well to help you make an informed decision just in case I don't cover the topic that you need to hear. But uh, I am gonna go over a couple things that I wanted to point out on some of the knives this week. And we're gonna start with Fiddleback Forge. So Fiddleback Friday, now being a part of Fixed Blade Friday, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get into some of those because it's tradition, gotta include Fiddleback Forge. Okay, so one thing you're gonna notice with Fiddleback Forge this week is three out of the four knives, like this classic Lone Star EDC right here in Walnut, is gonna have the Nitro V Steel, which is kind of a supercharged version of AEBL. So if you've been waiting for Fiddleback Forge knives in a stainless variant, these are going to be the ones you want. So not only do you have the classic or slightly classic uh, Lone Star EDC right here, we've also got a couple others in Nitro V as well. And one of those is the F2. So F2 is the model name, stands for fish and fowl. So obviously that gives away exactly what this knife was purposely made and designed to do. And an interesting uh, side note here is the handle is exactly like the Fiddleback Forge Hiking Buddy. Uh, so if you really like that knife like I do, you'll really enjoy this one. It'll feel at home in your hand. Uh, as soon as you start to use it. Now this one's rocking vintage micarta. We do have one on the site with some vintage crosscut Westinghouse micarta that's already on the site that's worth checking out. Uh, but like I said, this one is a Nitro V as well. So if you've been waiting on a fish and fowl knife in a stainless variant, this is the way to go. And another one in Nitro V coming up. And the next knife up with the Nitro V on there is the Fiddleback Forge Bushfinger, which of course is a classic design. One of the first that Andy Roy ever made. Rockin' the Nitro V, of course, super high grind, which is uh, very sought after with this model. And olive wood on here, absolutely gorgeous. So if you've been looking for a bush finger, which many of you have, in a stainless variant, here is one of your chances to get one. And of course, this is the Lion Killer model. This one made by Andy Roy with Fiddleback Forge, of course, with a beautiful piece of olive wood. And just a reminder now that on Knife Outpost, you can buy sheaths in the same place that you get the knives. There are, uh, I think, three different designs for the Lion Killer uh, in sheaths that you can check out from Diomedes Industries. And uh, that wraps up the Fiddleback Friday portion of Fixed Blade Friday. So we'll go on to the next maker. And since I mentioned Pops Knife Supply uh, with the Lion Killer, which is where you can buy the design if you're a knife maker, uh, you can pick up the design and make one of your own. Uh, I'd be remiss not to mention this knife next. This is from JB Knife Works, and this is a model that is based on James Poplin's design for a patch knife. So really great EDC size knife. As you can tell, I can get a full four fingers on there. I wear extra large gloves if that gives you any indication. But being a really open handle design, it makes it comfortable for pretty much any hand, hand size out there. And it's also very comfortable pretty much no matter how you hold it. So. I really, really like this knife. So he's calling it the Pops Patch after James Pops Poplin. And a really cool, beautiful desert ironwood. Can't go wrong. Obviously, JB Knife Works makes super clean knives and super nice knives. And I got another one from him I want to show you as well. Uh, worth noting, the Pops Patch I just showed you is an 8670 steel. This one is an 80 CRV2, which is another high carbon steel, uh, which is going to look really nice when this blade darkens up against that Lemon Drop G10. This is his Layman model, which is really popular. Um, it's also kind of bridges the gap between if you're into the larger EDC carries, like if you carry your knife on a belt, for instance. Uh, this one makes a really nice addition because it kind of fits into the EDC size if you're into a belt carry but it also is big enough to do most of your outdoor tasks too with a full four inch blade. So that's the Lehman model. If you're not a big fan of the Lemon Drop G10, check the site, knifeoutpost.com slash JBK is JB Knife Works' page. You'll see several other Lehmans on there, different handle materials, probably one that you'll fall in love with if you're not in love with the Lemon Drop G10, which can be a little polarizing. I like it, but it doesn't mean you do, but he's got some choices there so you can go check those out. All right, and again, speaking of Pops, one of the other partners at Pops Knife Supply is Alan Searles with W.A. Searles. Beautiful Damascus, stainless steel and turquoise for the bolster and the guard. 
sandbar stag. I don't think it gets more beautiful than that right there. I don't think I even need to talk about this one very much. Absolutely gorgeous. Nice little thumb ramp. Really sexy swedge. Very, very nice knife. Beautifully done from Alan Searles. As you know, awesome at Frontier Style Knives. This one's gorgeous. So probably not going to last very long. That's the uh, one from Alan this week. It's got a copper pin in it as well. Another nice touch. Some beautiful knives this week. And got one more that's sort of from the Pops family. Sort of. Let's check this one out. All right, so like I said, this one is sort of from the Pops Knife Supply family because the design is from Dirk Lutz, which is one of the partners at Pops Knife Supply. But the knife is by Dusty at Duckhead Forge, uh, which was an apprentice from Pops. So this one's really beautiful. 8670 on the steel, hollow grind, beautiful hammer texture, maple handle with that iridescent swirl inlay. Absolutely gorgeous. That's my fingerprints right there. So enjoy those as well. Absolutely beautiful knife. You really need to see the pictures on this on the preview site, like I said, knifeoutpost.com slash preview. Got to see the photos for that handle material to really pop out at you. It's a really beautiful knife. Really, really well done by Dusty at Duckhead Forge. And from Amy with Warlander Enterprises this week, first one. This is the Stout model. Lives up to its name, very full handle, very full figured. Really fills your hand out, which is really nice for doing bushcraft type task because you don't get a lot of hot spots. So this is part of her basics line where she's rocking 1084 steel, tried and true knife steel. And she's taking the finish level on the handles down one notch. Doesn't mean they're finished out badly. It just means they have a little bit more texture to them. They're not finished out quite as smooth, which gives you more grip in that same outdoor use scenario. So saves you some money as well. She's also tossing in sheath, as I mentioned before. There we go. Beautifully done knife sheath that fits the knife perfectly, obviously. And to go with the stout, we have the trout, which obviously pretty self-explanatory what this model's for. Again, this is part of the basics line. So a lot of texture on that handle, which is obviously super good for the use case scenario here. But this also makes a very good EDC knife as well, just because of the size of it. And that blade shape really lends itself to being able to do EDC tasks really well, as much as outdoor tasks. And of course, she does include the sheath for that as well. Next up, Okmogi Knife Company with his beautiful Shiloh model right here. Now this is Black Ash Burl, rocking W2 steel. I don't know if you can see it in this. You can definitely pick up in the photos. Uh, the texture that's in that W2 blade, really cool. And since that's a high carbon steel blade, it's going to start popping that texture a little more as it starts to patina. And that patina is going to look excellent with that really beautiful handle and that black ash burl. Super beautiful knife this week. This is one of my favorites from Okmogi Knife Company. I just like this size and form factor a lot. The handle feels really good in hand, just enough to just give me a full grip. And again, I wear extra large gloves if that helps you out. But really digging this knife. I think it's going to go pretty quick. He's had similar handle material on a couple in the past. They all sold really, really quickly. So if you're looking for one of those, snatch that up quick because I don't think it's going to stick around very long, if I had to be honest. Next up, we got MW Steelworks with a really cool EDC knife this week. And uh, pretty cool. If you're into uh, EDC knives that are a little on the thinner side, uh, that fit in maybe a pocket sheath really, really well so they're not as obtrusive or you just like a nice thin knife to use for EDC. Uh, that one's gonna be excellent. Really like this handle material. It's one of my favorite burnt orange micarta. I like the Warncliffe style, kind of almost a sheep's foot kind of drop at the end. Super thin in hand. I like pretty much everything about this knife. Really cool. Marcus's prices are always really great as well. So if you're looking for a really nice fixed blade EDC and you don't wanna break the bank, He's definitely one to check out. You can actually check out his direct page if you want to as well. Um, it's uh, knifeoutpost.com slash MW. You know, for MW Steelworks. All right, last but not least, Alpha Tango Lima Knife and Tool Company. We're just going to shorten it. We're going to call it ATL whenever we're talking about it. But I am excited to talk about his knives because in the last few videos, we've shown them to you, but I haven't really talked about them very much and given you much detail. One interesting detail of Alpha Tango Lima knives, ATL, is that he names all of his knife models usually after people. Usually the first person to buy the knife, family, friend, you get the idea. Well, he brought us one that didn't have a name, and it's this one. 
So this model right here is now called the Allison because Allison, who works here, insisted that it be so, so now it is so. Very beautiful knife, kind of fitting. It's got the brass liners and the brass pins on there. Allison has blonde hair. You know, tie it in however you need to, it works. Very sexy knife design, very nice in hand, very full. This, this knife, as soon as you pick it up, is just beefy. In the hand, you can tell by the blade thickness that it's, uh, it's a stout knife. Not overly heavy, not unwieldy at all. You know, balance point is roughly around right there, so it doesn't feel very unwieldy in the hand. Very nice handle shape as well. Nice design and a really nice name. All right, so quick note on the Allison that we just talked about. Um, it is brass liners. I think when the newsletter preview went out, it may have said copper, but now you've been set straight. It's right on the website now, but we can't unsend an email. So there you go. But we do have an ATL knife with copper and it is infused in the handle between those G10 layers right there. Beautiful Damascus, really cool model. This is called the Keanu, uh, which we've got a tie in for that as well. So that was named after a friend who's tying into the next one I'm going to show you as well. So psychedelic G10 with copper. It's hard to see the copper in the video right now, but if you go to the photos on the preview, you should be able to see those no problem. Really, really cool utility model right here. Fits nicely in hand. Blade shape is unique and funky enough to be a talking point, but super functional at the same time. Really digging this knife, really digging the Damascus, and really digging all the other ATL knives. And now for the tie-in for the name Keanu of this knife, with a totally different knife. Don't get confused. It, it makes sense, I promise. All right, so the tie-in is this knife right here. This is the ATL Smithy. Now, is this a collaboration with the Keanu fellow that I mentioned on the last one? No, this is a collaboration with Barry Bladeworks. That's upside down. Here you go. Alpha, Tango, Lima right there. Barry Bladeworks right there. Collab knife, both of the gentlemen worked on this knife and it is pretty cool, as you can see there. But the tie-in with the Keanu is the man that the last knife was named after made this sheet. So this is a full-on collab. Now, just note, this is the only ATL knife that comes with the sheath. Uh, the other ones you'll need to pick up separately. But this sheath was made by Mr. Keanu himself, which is a young man starting his leather-making journey and career. And you can tell he's really onto something. So they're probably going to start featuring more of his sheaths with the ATL knives. So... Pretty cool, that was the tie-in. Hope you didn't get too confused. Hope you liked the little backstory. And that collab actually reminded me, we do have a knife from Barry Blade Works, but I'm gonna go over him last. I'm gonna stay ATL for now, and the next knife up that I'm gonna show you is this beast right here. You know, I think he missed an opportunity not calling this the Rhino. Kinda looks like a Rhino to me. Could be a pretty cool name. But this is the Chucky, because he names them after folks that buy the first one, so Chucky, wanted a knife apparently with a gut hook, which we've had requests for in the past, but none of the other makers that we carry uh, do any of these. So the last one we posted up last week went super fast. Um, this one is in butterscotch paper micarta. Let me know, do you want to see more knives with the gut hook? Well, I'll let ATL know to keep making them, or uh, maybe we'll hit up some other makers, tell them it's a hotter commodity than they want to believe that it is, but uh, some guys that hunt really want, to, really want the gut hook on there, and um, other people just don't care for it. So. Kind of wondering what your opinion is on it, but that's the Chucky. I think it'll sell pretty quickly uh, based on the one last week that we had and how fast it went. But maybe it was just that one guy that really needed one. I don't know. Let me know. All right. So this model is really cool as well. Now you're not going to see it in this video, uh, but there's a unique feature about the Damascus here. So this is a twist Damascus uh, that ATL made himself. And you're going to see in the photos, if you look at the up close photos, uh, on the preview, you might be able to see them right there. There's a couple of like little lightning strike kind of figures. You can see it a little bit here on the back of the spine. This is from when they were actually building, making the Damascus. There was a little bit of nickel left over um, on one of the machines that got folded into it. So obviously that that's a normal thing for making Damascus anyway. So it's not anything that's going to cause an issue, but it gives it that ni another little nice uh, little thing to look at in there, a nice little feature. And a pretty cool knife, very beautiful Damascus. It's hard to see in this lighting in particular just because it's been so, so darkly etched, but as you use it, it'll come out a little more. And really beautiful Moab Persimmon Burl is what we name this because the color reminds us of Moab. 
but the uh, material is persimmon burl. So very, very cool knife, very cool functional design that doesn't look like it would be as functional as it is, but nice utility knife. And I've got a couple more from ATL that are also pretty interesting, but uh, kind of digging the whole little lightning effect in that. Pretty cool. All right, next up, Margarita G10 that you saw last week on a few kitchen knives, but maybe you wanted an outdoor knife or an EDC knife instead. Well, he's hooking you up. This is the tray model with that same vintage Margarita G10. Commando with no liners, 8670. So a high carbon steel for you. Three and a half inch blade on there. Pretty comfortable in hand, even though it's a little thinner on the handle, as you can see. So if you kind of like your knives a little thinner on the handle, uh, very comfortable the way that it's shaped. So he did a good job shaping it off. A little more of that square fit in between the knuckles kind of shape. Um, but pretty comfortable no matter how you hold it. So really nicely done. If you're looking for a really cool little larger on the EDC size or smaller on the outdoor size, check out the tray. Really cool. And the Margarita G10 is pretty nice too. All right, next up is an LDL is the model name. Since for Little Daddy Love, you may remember that he has a model called the BDL, which is Big Daddy Love. Adam's last name obviously is Love. So I don't remember exactly who Little Daddy Love's nickname was, but that's kind of where the lineage comes in. Really cool little knife. Uh, beautiful white handle material. So that's white linen with red liners. Nice three inch blade. Perfect EDC size, in my opinion. 8670 on the steel, so high carbon steel will darken up. Really start contrasting even more with that beautiful white handle and those red pins and stripes. Pretty cool knife, LDL. And last but not least, this is Barry Blade Works, Mr. Luke Barry, who did the collaboration with one of the ATL knives that we just showed you. This is one of his little kitchen knives. I'm really a fan of this size. I think smaller kitchen knives typically tend to be uh, less intimidating uh, for most people and this is no exception obviously so this make a really great gift for somebody who's just starting to kind of up their kitchen knife game and want something uh, really beautiful really functional definitely check out all the specs and everything on this and with a kitchen knife you want a balance point uh, that's right up there by the blade balance point on this one woo, almost I'm pro pro don't try this at home folks balance point is right there where most people are going to hold the knife even if they pinch up it feels really nice in hand, really light and nimble. And uh, that handle material is absolutely beautiful as well. So definitely check out Luke's Worth, Luke's Work. Definitely check out Luke's Work on the site. You can find his page, knifeoutpost.com slash Barry. All right, so if you're not familiar with how Fixed Blade Friday works, all the knives go up 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at knifeoutpost.com slash Friday. You want to be there a little bit early because it's the first person to complete the entire checkout process that gets the knife. You can either shop on the Friday page or you can go to Shop by Maker at the top of the page and go to the particular maker you want. It'll also post their new knives at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time there as well. Oh, one more thing. Make sure if you're on Instagram to go follow us on the new Knife Outpost account. So it's simply at Knife Outpost. Pretty easy to find. We'll see you there. Be posting up some interesting stuff weekly on that. We do some in-hand demos and stuff there as well. Shorter videos, obviously. And uh, you might find those to be helpful teasers as well. And we'll see you over there. And we'll see you next week.